Um, and yeah, I know we're gonna start at 2.05, or I guess it's 11.05 for you guys. Um, but, I, and I think you guys just did like intros, but I didn't meet any of you. So if anyone wants to like post in the chat, like where you're from, I'm just curious. I'm from Canada, by the way. Yeah, it's, um, it's 2 p.m. here. Hi, Angela. Hi, okay, actually, yeah. I don't think that was a good idea to say everyone's names. I probably can't keep up, <laughs> but hi. Christina, if you want, I can read some of the answers out. Oh, cool. Yeah, sure. Um, I like I have the chat opened up on my phone as well. Oh, nice. Multi-device. <laughs> oh, we have Maria from Brazil. Very cool. Oh, hey, okay. some people from Canada. Cool. Also, as a quick note, sorry, Christina, um, for when we have the workshop running, just a reminder, if you have your camera on, you do get an entry for a lottery, so to get a, to win a stylus, but just as a note, and of course, we want to make sure that Christina feels like she's part of a community, and there are, there are people she's talking to, so be awesome if you can have your camera on. We're not starting, actually, we're starting at five, and it's perfect, so Christina, if you want to start, Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, and also another note is that um, I'll probably be like asking some like um, questions like during the workshop. So yeah, I'll, I'll be like, I have the chat open and stuff and it'll be nice. So thanks. And the lottery thing is cool. It's a, it's a great incentive. I would, I would do that if I was participating. Anyways. Um, okay, yeah. So welcome to the intro to UX and um, UI design workshop. Um, I'm gonna does this work? Okay, so I guess, okay, yeah, first I'll start with a little bit about myself to, if you guys can know me. So I'm um, going into my third year at OCAD University in Canada, and I'm in a program called Digital Futures, which is kind of like art and code. Um, I, yeah, right now I work um, as a UX design intern at Cisco, and I design like cybersecurity software. Um, and then earlier this year, I was a design technologist intern, at um, RBC, which is the largest bank in Canada, um, where I did like design and code. And I've also designed for some like startups and other organizations in the past. And I've, I really like going to hackathon. So I'm glad to talk to you guys here. Um, and also, yeah, I've been to 10 plus hackathons and also 10 plus concerts. So I don't really relate, but I like both of those things. So um, yeah, so today we're gonna talk about um, what is design in general and why does it matter? And then we're gonna learn about UX design and the design thinking process. So um, first, I'm just going to ask, um, you know, before we go into UX design, what is design? So I'm just curious, um, what do you guys think is design? You can post it in the chat. Take some time to think about it. There's no wrong answers. Here's a few. Oh, yeah creating ideas for things. Yeah. Organize your ideas for so that others can understand, make things pretty. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, oh yeah. Wow, make things look pretty. I th that wasn't planned. Okay, but yeah, it's sometimes it's making things look pretty. Sometimes it's not just how things look, but how they work. Um, a lot about aesthetics, expression and creativity, sending a message, solving problems is, is, is another one making stuff. I think someone said something similar. So yeah, design can be a lot of things. Um, making something how, yeah. So it's it's about like solving problems, how things look and how things um, look and how they work. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite um, quotes is everyone designs who devises courses of action aimed at changing existing situations into preferred ones. So I know that this sounds like really abstract and like, um, I mean, there's a lot of definitions out there, but I really like this one because it kind of shows that like design is everything. It's, it's, it's just coming up with any idea or plan with the goal of changing the current state of something into something different. So like kind of any, anything with an intention or anything with a plan is design. And it, it might be kind of unclear now, but I think um, we'll, we'll see it kind of in action as we continue um, today. So yeah, just keep it in mind and then um, you'll start to see it more. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. So um, before we get into like 
you know, more about what is design? Like, why should we care about design and why does it matter? Um, I guess like now that we've established that almost everything is design, it kind of follows that design affects everything and how we live every day, like everything around us, um, someone probably designed, like whether on purpose or not, like everything that you're using today, everything like in your room and stuff. So why does like good design or yeah, design in general, like matter? Um, we're gonna look at an example. So what are these? Um, can you post it in the chat? What, what are you be looking at? Pill bottles, medicine, yeah. Um, what are they used for? Treat patients, medicine, yeah. Um, who uses them? What type of people? Sick people, yeah to contain medication and inform the patient about the contents, people that are sick. Yeah, people of medical care. Um, so thinking about these things, like, you know, who uses them and, and what are they used for? What do you think could be improved about the design of these bottles? Make the words bigger, easier to read, bigger font. Yeah, I agree. Like some of the like things are like so small. Like, how do you know if you're taking the right one? The prescription less crowded. It should be clear. Better grip, yeah. Yeah, the, all I totally agree. Um, yeah, so some some of the things that that are could be improved with the de design of these bottles are that one, yeah, like you mentioned, it's hard to read what's actually important. So like the brand or the pharmacy is the biggest thing, and it's at the top. And like when people are trying to take medicine, like um, like you know, like you mentioned, like sick people or could be like people with um, like not great vision, um, you know, like they're, they're trying to find out like what the dosage is and what medicine they're taking so they can take the right one. But you know, like that actual important information, it's so hard to read and you just see like this big like Costco at the top. Um, and also like the text, right? It like, um, oh yeah. Yeah, so like take one tablet every day, like the, the actual instructions. So also like when you're reading it, um, it's really inconvenient. It's not just that the words are small, like you have to keep turning the bottle to read it. It's like, it's very inconvenient. You can't just like look at it and you have to like interact with it and stuff. And, and also like sometimes there's like, you know, like red or black text on like a dark red background which like makes it even harder to read. And then after all that reading, like, um, you know you're trying to be like, like, am I taking the right one? And then you have to open it. And like these like um, caps, they're like, known for being really hard to open like I mean for most people who are kind of like healthy and able-bodied it's fine like we can we can we can get through it it's just a little difficult it's a little inconvenience but um there is like there's there's certain people who um, particularly struggle for example you know like people with weak wrists or people who have um like people who are older and uh people who have like whose first language is like not English, like um, there's just, it just makes the experience of like taking medicine like a lot more difficult, right? So um, Deborah Adler, she was a designer um, and she noticed like all these things with these pill bottles after her grandparents, they accidentally took each other's medicine because like they have like the same last name, right? Um, and it was, since it was like also like really hard to read and it was really easy to mix up. So um, she actually designed a new type of bottle called a uh, Clear RX. Um, so I'm going to show you the, the improvement or the, the design now. Um, the instructions are really clear. It's easy to read. The most important information is at the top and it's really clear what the, what the medicine and the dosage is. And actually, um, if you look at this, it says like take one tablet by mouth one time daily. And um, it kind of ties back to what I was saying about everything in design being really intentional because um, you could even like the words, like you could say this sentence in many different ways. Like you could say, take one tablet once a day instead of one time daily. But um, they actually did that on purpose saying one time daily because um, you know, the word once in English, like O-N-C-E, it's the same spelling as 11 in Spanish. Um, I don't know if anyone here speaks Spanish. I don't, I mean, I wish I did, but yeah. So, so they made sure to use the word daily and, and the design is, um, Good design is, is really intentional like that and thinking about all the people, not just like maybe the majority of people who who are speaking English, but also, you know, like um, people whose English is not their first language or and like lots of all the different 
users and perspectives. Um, another thing, wait, this Okay, sorry. Um, so another thing is you can see the name from above. So it's um, it's it's really hard to mix up. Um, and so like if people are like putting it on their like nightstand, they don't have to like you know look at it. They just like like right there on top. Um, and oh, like in their drawer, they can like see all the different ones without opening it. And another thing is that it's really easy to open. Um, so they design like a new type of cap. And also the um, sorry. Okay. So also these like purple rings here, um, they have like different colors available and it's color coded. So like, like how I mentioned how the grandparents were like, um, they like mixed it up. They, they added color coding so that different families can tell like whose pill bottle is whose without having to, you know, like squint your eyes and like look at it and stuff. And the, yeah, the cap is easier to open for like people with, um, like wrist, um, wrist pain and stuff like that. So as you can see, um, good design is intentional, it's purposeful, and it aims to improve people's lives. And these designs are pretty, um, I, I, yeah, they're pretty good. They're, people like them a lot more than the previous ones, but like, how come we don't see them everywhere? Like, I know like at my local pharmacy, um, we still use like the old ones. So what happened? Um, so actually they were designed for Target's pharmacy, but Target ended up selling their pharmacy to CVS and CVS didn't want to make the switch because it would be expensive for them. So um, they just went back to the old ones. And so people started, you know, like digging through their trash and reusing these bottles. And it just like kind of shows how like, um, yeah, then like creating petitions. So it kind of just shows how there's like often a lot of conflict between like what's beneficial and easy for businesses versus what's beneficial for users. And I guess that's part of the reason I like this example too, because it shows like just how much design can make people's lives easier um, and potentially like save lives too, because medication is so important. But it also shows that um, while we design for people, like the world we live in is like really complicated. And um, like we have to learn how to balance like user needs with like business constraints and time constraints and technical constraints and things like that. Um, so now we're going to do, uh, uh, we're going to get into UX design. We're going to do an activity. Um, I'm going to post, oh wait. I haven't been looking at the chat. Okay. It's hard to open to prevent children from, yeah, that's true. Um, I don't, I don't really know about much about the whole design of it, but I feel like they, good design would consider those things as well. But yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to paste the activity um, link in the chat. I don't know if you guys can access this, like just let me know in the, in the chat if you can. But we can just go through it um, if you actually. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, cool. Fun. Wow. I'm so excited. Okay. I've never done this before. In okay. So, um, so okay. Yeah. So we're. I'm just gonna do a short little activity, um, and. And okay, yeah, you can just ignore this uh, box here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take one minute to design a vase or a vase. Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna you can draw anything you want. If you guys, I mean, I see most of you guys know how to use it, but there's like a pen here. You can just right here. I'll draw one too. Okay, I'm gonna do like 30 more seconds. Just some very nice, some nice drawings. Love the cat. Also, if you guys press like the slash, you can like say like, like say hi, and it like disappears after some time. Like, 
Yeah, it is like stickers. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, so I'm going to end it now, but um, now we are going to um, think about, instead of designing a, a vase or a vase, I'm, I'm sorry for, okay. All right, now we are going to think of designing a way, sorry, think of designing a way for someone to enjoy flowers in their home. And so, um, yeah, you can either draw it out or you can, you can write your idea like on a sticky note, or if you wanna add your own sticky note, you can just like, you know, yeah. When you're thinking of a way for someone to enjoy flowers in their home, I think it's like, like, um, like try to take a step back and think about like, why would someone buy a vase and like, what purpose does it serve? And like a vase is kind of only one way to enjoy flowers in your home, but what are, yeah. This is so fun. Wow, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna give like one more minute and then we can, um, I'll try to walk through some of the ideas. If, if you guys wanna also maybe post in chat a short description of what you drew. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Have natural flowers on cut garden pot for flowers to grow. If there is a lack of time to take care of flowers, dry and artificial flowers can be visually enjoyed. Nice. I'm, I'm liking the, the second one where it's um, kind of more creative. Okay, I'm gonna finish it now. But um, the point, I mean, I guess you can continue if you if you want, but I'm just gonna talk while while yeah, well, you guys draw. Um, but yeah, the point of this was kind of to think about, you know, like what what are the differences between these two um, prompts? Like, I guess, like, um, yeah, feel free to like um, type it out um, if you have any ideas. But um, yeah, the first one is kind of like limited and narrow, and it doesn't really allow for like creative problem solving, and it doesn't really think about, you know, like why would someone want a vase. And yeah, yeah, I agree, Elsa. The second prompt allows for more creativity. Um, and the second one is more about thinking about enjoying flowers as an experience instead of thinking about designing something like an object. Um, so it's kind of like, like the first one started with a solution, um, like just, you know, you know you're gonna draw a vase but the second one is more about um, starting with a, a not a problem, well, a problem or an opportunity. Like, you know, how can someone enjoy flowers in their home? And um, sometimes the first one can be easier because you don't have to think about it as much. You just, you know, you're just doing a vase. But um, so sometimes, the, you know, the, thinking about it in, a, in the second way can be like harder because I don't know, it requires more um, thinking, I guess, but um, it often, you know, like gets to the point of of what um, of of the problem or the opportunity that you're trying to solve more more, and it like focuses on on people and their their need for something instead of like the object. Oh, I like how there's images in 
transparent pods so they can see through the plants. Okay, but yeah, I'm gonna go back. I mean, you guys have this link too, so you can always, you know, admire people's drawings later because it's uh, in the chat. But um, okay, I don't remember what I was gonna talk about. Oh yeah, so um, so what is UX design? Like like we kind of did in the activity. Um, the second the, the second I guess the second prompt was um, thinking about enjoying flowers as an experience, right? And, and UX design is really about um, designing experiences. So yeah, before I go into like, I guess my personal definition of it, um, after all this, like, what do you think is UX design or what does UX design even stand for? You can put it in, in the chat. And also kind of like, like we, We've just spent like a, some time like going through design for different things, but we actually haven't talked really about like websites or apps because I guess like design is um, it like it kind of applies to everything and it just it existed way before. It's just something that we apply to digital experiences as well. But yeah, okay, wow, everyone knows that it's user experience. Nice. Anything else about <laughs> UX design? I can yeah, wow. So in sync, user experience design. Um, it can be designing apps and websites, but not always. Um, it's about kind of about understanding people, like like we kind of did in the activity, trying to understand why people would enjoy flowers. Um, creating it can also be like creating interactions between humans and brands. Um, a lot of times, you're designing for a company. Um, Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go through my personal definition of UX design, which is our user experience design, which is it's the process of understanding people to solve their problems and add delight during any inter any interaction they have with a product, service, or a brand. So okay, it's kind of long. I'm just gonna <laughs> break it down. So um, it's like I th I think it's a process. It's not just about like the end result, um, like like just a vase. Uh, or about what something like looks like, but it, it's about like kind of, yeah, design is a process in the intention and the purpose. Um, and it's about understanding people. So, you know, like their, um, their behaviors, their motivations, goals and needs. And, um, you know, like once we understand people, that's how we can better solve their problems and not just, not just solve their problems, not just fix it, but like kind of go beyond that and add delight. Um, so like that's, Kind of, I noticed a lot. Of some of you guys were like talking about enjoy. So yeah, like um, adding adding delight during any interaction, any interaction they have with a product, service, or brand. Um, and also the reason why I said any interaction is because it's not just screens, um, but it's like the entire experience that someone has with like a product. So that could be like from uh, seeing an ad on Instagram or like talking to an employee at a store or trying to return a product. Um, like those things are all part of like someone's user experience. So um, I know you guys have probably heard about like um, UX and UI and like all these terms. Um, I'm gonna kind of do a quick diagram or something. Okay, so um, human of like some like key terms. So human-centered design is like a framework that considers human perspectives throughout the design process. Um, you might hear this a lot. It's, it's um, Kind of like UX design is part of it, and it's just like like a big approach that like many different disciplines can take. So um, UX design is like kind of inside of human centered design. It's more specific to experiences, so it's like one of many disciplines that that takes a human centered approach. And then I would say that user interface design is actually um, like inside of UX design because. User interfaces are about, you know, like the interactions and the visual elements that um, people have with digital screens, or I guess it doesn't even have to be digital screens, like the user interface of like a computer, it's like a lot of hardware, right? Or like your keyboard and stuff. But anyways, um, yeah, it's just, it's just part of the experience. Um, what's the difference between UX and UI? Yeah, so UX design is about like the entire experience that someone has, um, like, you know, from maybe like if you want to like return a product, like, you know, like you're calling on the, you might like search, you might like Google, like, how do I return this product? Might like call it like the entire process of um, returning that product is, is um, the user experience. And the user interface is 
just about the visual like elements that you would like think people will like physically interact with so like you know like your phone screen or your like the website that you're looking through of like how do I return it so that's why I say that like user interface is a part of UX because um, it's like part of the whole experience if that makes sense um, so okay I'm not going to go into this you can look at it later but um, I just wanted to leave this for a reference um, in that like uh, people always say like UX design has a lot of different disciplines related to it. So um, yeah, I can, it's pretty interesting. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna go through like a design thinking process, which is like commonly used in UX design to um, try to create solutions. Um, it's like a process that people use to develop solutions that are more helpful for people and make sure that we're like actually putting people First, like thinking about the experience and not just um, like let's design a vase, but more like oh how you know how can we help people enjoy flowers? Um, so if you like Google it, like design thinking process, um, you might see a lot of different diagrams, and I feel like it can be overwhelming. Honestly, for me, it kind of is. But um, no process is like the same. Like I like for every different thing you're designing, it probably it really depends on like um, like how much time you have who you're working with, um, even like what type of thing you're designing, like if it's an app or a website, or like if it's for like marketing or if, if it's a tool used for like business owners. Um, but the, yeah, the, the most important um, reason why people follow a process, I guess, is just to make sure that people or you are like solving the right problem. Um, if you're actually working on something that's like, you know, like worthwhile and test if your solution actually solves that problem. So um, it's just important to, you know, like use your judgment and define your goals and your constraints along the way. So um, those kind of processes can kind of be simplified into um, five key areas. Um, it, I'm going to go through them like in this order, but a lot of times like it doesn't really go straight from like empathize defined like in a linear in a linear fashion sometimes people you know will like um go back in stuff and like you know people can start with uh, building a prototype and then um they might test that and then and then do some more research on like why the prototype is like not working or not but yeah i'm just gonna give an example of like what um yeah for each thing i'm just gonna tell you a bit about like what ux designers um, like for digital products might do at each, each stage and like, you know, like why we do it and um, what type of things that you might be able to do. And also um, there's some like resources at the end of the slide um, for like, I don't know if you wanna look into it further. Um, so the first, first um, stage is about empathize. It's called empathize um, and it's about understanding people. So like the purpose of empathizing is to try to understand people's products um, sorry, understand people's um, be like behaviors and motivations and validate like any assumptions that we might have about them that, that relate to what type of product that you're trying to build. So um, this might be like looking through like um, current, like existing apps and trying to understand people's like frustrations with them. Um, you could be looking at like stats and data and like pinpointing like, um, like, like observations of like, trends and data you could be like researching or like talking to talking to your family or your friends and interviewing like maybe your target demographic to understand like some of their um, common like pain points and some like shared um, problems that they're all having and this is just try to try to understand your, your problem space more so what like kind of once you've gathered a lot of information um, you want to define the problem it's about like narrowing in on define is about narrowing in on the right problem. So like probably during your research, um, you'll come across like a lot of different um, types of information, like whether it's, yeah, you, you, you'll come across a lot of different types of information, but um, define is about like figuring out what's most important and what you wanna focus on. And so um, some things that people might do are like um, kind of, so these are called personas here. Um, it's basically just identifying like your target user, like what are their main um, needs and stuff and their demographic. Uh, sometimes you might also like, if you're designing an experience, you might want to map out like the journey of someone. So um, 
for example, like I mentioned before, if you're re returning, you want to help design a better way for people to return their clothes to the store. You might want to map out the experience of the journey of someone as they return clothes to try to understand like um, which areas are they like um, most frustrated in and which areas and and then think of like in those areas of opportunity, how can you like design something to um, improve that. And then you might also want to like um, kind of define a problem statement so that your team is all like kind of aligned towards the same um, the same goal. So, you know, like um, some examples here, are, these are about like food waste, but like, yeah, you, you might want to focus on like, you know, how might we inform people about food waste or teach people on better maintaining their produce at home, um, things like that, so that you can start thinking about ideas that kind of align towards the same like goals and the vision. Um, so idea, the next one is about exploring possibilities. So uh, kind of now that you understand the, pro the, the problem, um, like, yeah, you wanna explore different ways that you can solve. It's basically like brainstorming, right? Um, so usually um, in, the, in the beginning of brainstorming, like we just wanna encourage like any type of ideas, like no matter how like wild, um, because like, yeah, even like wild ideas can help, maybe not as feasible ideas can help people think of um, good ones. And oh, wait, one second, my notes just crashed. Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm using my phone now. So um, yeah, so then some of the examples here are like, um, one thing that especially for digital products, um, it's really like useful to look at like existing apps or how other people are solving the problem so that you're kind of not reinventing the wheel, but like thinking about like how you might do something better or what other solutions are, are lacking. Um, and you might wanna think about like, you might start brainstorming like the flow of someone going through um, what you wanna do. Okay, so the next one prototype is about actually building your prototype um, so, so that you can test it later on. And it doesn't actually have to be anything like um, fancy. Like I really like this cart um, image here because like um, um, it, it, it's about like um, building like the most minimal thing that you would need to test something. So for example, even if, if someone was building a car, like um, they might not, they might not start with thinking about building a car, they might just think about what's a way that we can transport someone from one way to another. And you can start, you can start testing these things with even like a skateboard, if that makes sense. So it doesn't have to be like a huge thing. It can even just be like sketches or anything that you can um, get feedback on, but it could also, it could be code. Um, it could be like designs or um, something like that. And then when it comes to testing it, testing it is about just uh, validating your solution and seeing like, does it really solve the original problem that you intended it to solve and about gaining insights on like whether it's valuable for users and like watching them interact with your product and learning like how to improve. Um, it doesn't also, this doesn't have to be like after you finish all a lot of steps, like you could even like um, in ideation, just like get feedback from people and um, yeah, figure out like if it's useful or not. So like some examples are like um, A-B testing where people will like, um, you can test two different versions of a design and kind of see which one performs better. There's also like preference testing, uh, just asking people which one people prefer. Um, and then in some kind of like, like analytic software, there's actually like eye tracking software. So you want, want to see where people's eyes go. I mean, that's more useful in that sometimes, I mean, I guess it could be useful in a lot of things, but one example I can think of is like marketing. Like you want people um, to see certain things more like if you want them to buy something you want to know that they're looking at the button something like that I mean I guess you could check that through click click through rates but that's another thing you can check too but anyways the, the main point is just to um you know make sure like does this solve the problem so um okay so um at a yeah so at a hackathon um you probably wouldn't have time to to do like a lot of different things I think it's just up to um, up to your own judgment of like validating like which you know like does this solve the problem and like picking like which things to do here and there and also 
I also think that like hackathons are a good time to start with like, you know, you can start with assumptions in the beginning and you don't have to do like, um, and then once you build something, you can go on and like test that thing that you built later on and then, you know, like improve upon that, if that makes sense. Cause I guess like hackathons are about like building it. Um, and yeah, it like, it, yeah, it's good to start small. Um, and so I'm gonna finish with, yeah, roles. So, um in kind of in the industry a lot or you, you will hear people like being like oh i'm a ux researcher i'm a ui designer like uh, i just wanted to give like some overview of like what these roles actually do um because i don't know if you felt i mean probably like a lot of times you might just be doing all of them but um i don't know especially in bigger companies it's a bit more like segmented um so like a ux researcher they usually focus more on like the beginning parts like understanding people trying to research what their what their problems are and like um, interviewing them they don't really do as much of the building but they they often will do a lot of like the testing and analysis because it kind of goes back like like once you finish testing it that's basically like research insights for you to better understand people so it kind of like it goes in like a cycle too and then a ui designer is like basically the opposite ish like they're focused on building it and they're focused on like the the visual aspects and like um kind of the interactions of what people are actually seeing on their screens ux designer and product designer they usually do like everything um the main difference is i mean okay in a real life context they like they usually like do like basically the same thing but the Technically, a UX designer would focus a bit more on the user needs and a product designer would um, focus on like business goals and user and user needs together. But I feel like you can't really separate the two. So these two, they basically do like, the same thing. Um, but yeah, OK, that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah, there are many more, but these are some of the most common. Um, I have a bunch of like resources at the end if you can if you're interested in, to like learn about it further. Um, so like, I think these first three are like, uh, frequently asked questions and like getting started in learning UX design, UX design methods, it kind of goes more in depth about like what I talked about in the different stages. And then Figma design dictionary and hackathon starter kit, they're just some like resources of like words and resources of like visual design and UI design. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all. Hey, I'm actually that kind of went more on time than I expected. So yeah, um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I hope that wasn't too confusing <laughs> or yeah, I hope that made sense. Yeah, actually, Christina, since we have, you know, three minutes, we could make this like a mini um, F. So if anyone does have any questions for Christina, um, just put it in the chat and Christina can take a look at it. And it's actually a great opportunity. So, yeah. Yeah, and also if you like can't think of any questions, you can always, um, I don't know, like I'm pretty online a lot, so you can always just message me later. And yeah, good luck with um, the hackathon as well. Oh, there's recordings, nice. Mm -hmm. Actually, if a participant wanted to connect with you after this workshop, Christina, how can they do that? Uh, so it's on, oh, you know what, I'll, I can post it in the, in the chat as well, but in the, in the link, I, I've linked my, uh, my LinkedIn and my Twitter. Um, if you don't have LinkedIn and Twitter, I guess I can, oh, here's my email. I'll, I'll send it in the chat. And if there aren't, actually, let's see, we have a question from Nua, how would UX design contribute to designing a website? Like what apps, aspects of a website? Um, I guess if we're going through kind of the process, um, first UX design would kind of be like understanding why do we need a website? And like, what's, who's, who is the website for? Why are people visiting the website? And then uh, you would kind of like try to research and get the answers to those questions and then 
try to come up with some ideas of like, you know, like since people want this type of information on the website and they're going on the website too, I'll just use the returning clothes example again. They're using their, um, their, yeah, they're going on the website to return clothes. And then let's say that this is like a clothes for, um, I don't know, senior citizens. So maybe since they're like senior citizens, like we have to under, like think about accessibility and like, um, yeah, like understanding all the different considerations of the, the, the main audience of the website and then um, coming up with like ideas on how we could best serve the needs of these people through a website. And then when it comes to actually building it, you would be, um, you know, probably working with developers or you can make it yourself too. I don't know, there's lots of no code tools um, to implement it. And then the, yeah, the UI side would be more like, you know, what, what colors are we using that are accessible and easy to read and like these fonts and um, is it easy to navigate? And like, how does it compare to other websites? Like, does it behave in a similar way? Stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> What degrees are necessary oh. for pursuing a career in UX design? Um, I can answer. I mean, I'm. Wait, do you guys have something after this? No, no, no. Feel free. Um, this does end at forty-five, so if people want to go, you can. If you want to stay and hear Christina's answer, do so too. I'll be staying here if other JT leaders want to go. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I like this question. I feel like there's, I mean, right now in everyone that I've worked with in UX kind of like comes from different backgrounds. Cause it kind of does like relate to so many different things. Like I've seen like psychology, computer science, graphic design, but I think like now, like I've started seeing more, um, like really specific UX design related degrees. Like in Canada, the Sheridan has interaction design and um, Laurier has a UX design program. And I think in some like US schools, there's um, human computer interaction and um, human-centered computing um, or human-centered engineering, so something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like also another thing is that um, kind of like I mentioned before, there's a lot of different roles in, in UX too. So um, a lot of times like people will specialize in something instead of being like a very um i don't know like a, a general ux designer so like if people want to become like a ux researcher it's more common that they it, it's less common that they go to a design school and they usually have more like research experience through like a master's um or if someone is more working on like um in ux they're more working on the ui side um it, it's a lot of times it's more useful to get like formal training in like graphic design or sometimes um, like there's like also a lot of roles that are like hybrid design and code kind of like my previous one. So computer science is also um, pretty useful. So honestly, I would say it really depends on like your own interests because like um, a lot of things can tie back to design if that makes sense. Um, is UX design a common ground from students coming from different majors? Yeah, it's pretty common. Um, how often does UX involve coding? Um, I would say that honestly, not that often. I think it depends on, it also might depend on what country you're in, like um, which part of the world you're in. Like, I feel like in North America, um, a lot of companies, especially bigger companies, it's like really, um, like the roles are really specialized. So all, like most designers won't do coding at all. And they even have like designers that only focus on UI and designers that people that only focus on research and it's like very like um, split up. But then there's also like, like I mentioned those like hybrid roles and also in some like startups, um, sometimes people are looking for uh, team members with like various skill sets. So like they wanna be able to implement their design and code it too. Also like um, in freelance, like if you wanna become a freelance designer, I would say it's really useful. It's basically like having your own business, right? And you're like making products and things for for um for your clients so development would be really important if you're or really valuable I guess if you're doing freelance design because then you can design and develop stuff for people um but honest like for 
most of the internships and like roles uh yeah you don't need to do coding and if if you're if you're not like interested in coding you can still um yeah get, go into ux design without really getting into code but it definitely is like really useful to 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 learn about it still because we are like designing for the web and it makes it easier to communicate with like developers and understand like how your design will like behave in like responsive considerations and like different devices and stuff like that so yeah and yeah that was kind of related to the, the second question too so um yeah i hope that answered it well perfect thank you chris i think we're going to end it here so that people have time for the lunch break thank you so so much christina that was so fun i loved how the interactivity with Figma and storytelling again, beautiful. Um, we will be closing this meeting pretty shortly. And again, it's the same link for the next workshops. And on looks like you want to say something. We're actually not going to close the meeting because we're going to have um, a meeting for people who are having trouble with their teams at 12. Um, so yeah, we're going to keep this open. Okay, cool. Well, otherwise, have a nice lunch break for those that are in Pacific time or Eastern time. And thank you again so, so much, Christina. Um, feel free to connect with her on Twitter or LinkedIn. Thanks. Yeah, it was nice to meet you guys. And um, good luck and have fun in the hackathon. And um, oh, yeah, happy summer vacation. Yeah, bye. <laughs>